Welcome back, everyone. This is the Restaurant Rockstars podcast, engaging topics that help restaurants build their brands, rock their profits, and deliver amazing guest service experiences. Today, I'm super excited to have Mr. Jonathan Morse, and he is the co-founder and CEO of a company called Triple Seat, and it is a web management app for restaurants and hotels. Welcome to the show, Jonathan. How are you today? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. Oh, absolutely. Thanks so much for appearing. So, Jonathan, you've got a 30-plus year history in hospitality, and I know my first job in the restaurant industry was working as a dishwasher at a country club. You actually started as a busboy. You've had numerous positions, management positions with leading companies, and now you're the co-founder and CEO of this hospitality app. So, can you take us on your hospitality journey and what you've learned and, you know, what the ride was all about on the way to becoming a CEO? Yeah, sure. So I was a busboy at a small family Italian restaurant in Massachusetts. Um, I I went for that job um, because it was better than being a paper boy in the snow. So um, (laughs) that's how I wound up there. And I I was was in it all the way through high school. Um, And then when I went to college, um, after graduation, I basically went back to it. Um, in the hotel world where I was uh, working for Marriott um, for a little while and then jumped out of hotels and went back to restaurants um, as a manager inside of um, a restaurant chain called uh, Bertucci's, um, which did like, again, Italian restaurant pizzas and (laughs) jumped out of restaurants and went back to hotels. And this time um, in hotels, I was in more of a catering and sales role with a large hotel group called Starwood, which you might be familiar with with the West End and the Sheridan. Very familiar with Starwood. Yep, so um, I was with them with Starwood in the very beginning when they only had a couple hotels and I did sales for them. Um, And then they obviously expanded and became huge. Um, And how I found my way into software was I was looking for um, a sales, uh, program that was going to help me um, book multiple hotel properties. There wasn't anything really available out there at the time. And I found a company called Daylight. It doesn't exist anymore, but, um, and that's how I, I jumped ship and found my way into technology. Uh, but it was technology for um, hospitality and for restaurants and stuff like that. And I stayed in the hospitality world, um, software world, up until when I founded. Uh, Triple C. Thank you. We're going to dive into the technology and the app and the ins and outs of that. But before we do, you mentioned something that uh, is is very familiar to me, the, the well-known chain called Bertucci's. Now, Bertucci's high-flying, you know, pizza Italian chain started by Joey Crignali. Um, he was sort of one of my early heroes in the business, sort of not a mentor per se, but I followed that success. Uh-huh. You know, I started a, a very successful wood-fired brick oven pizzeria that was somewhat inspired by Bertucci's that became very, very successful. Uh, can you tell me again what you did there and what you might have learned from that and how did that company sort of fall from grace I know Joey went on to start other concepts and you know they they opened stores all over the northeast and then they ended up closing a lot of those stores I don't even know if Bertucci still exists but can you take us there uh yeah Bertucci still exists uh they got bought by Earl's I believe um but they're still around so how I find my way to Bertucci's Um, I was actually interviewed by Joey um, at his headquarters, which was an interesting experience because he's an interesting cat. Um, He doesn't like to wear shoes. So he's like, he's he's interviewing me um, barefoot and inside this big corporate office, I thought was kind of humorous. And he showed me around the corporate office barefoot. Um, And I was young at the time and I was like, wow, this is pretty cool. So um, my job at Petucci's was uh, basically uh, floor manager, assistant general manager, general manager. And I worked at um, a couple stores. I worked at the one in Wellesley, Massachusetts, which was in a converted uh, movie theater. um, And also worked in um, the one in Newton. And they when I was there, they were high flying. They were super busy places and they were original in the respect that I think they were like one of the first to introduce brick oven pizza. And they also had a bocce ball court, which was kind of cool and, and unique. 
Um, and they used really fresh ingredients and they roasted like the peppers in the oven, which had a really unique taste at the time. Um, so, and of course they were all about their roles, right? Everybody wanted their roles. Uh, so when I was there, they, they were super busy. They, they, they hit all the notes, they were really well run. Um, when I left to go to hotels, they were still really well run. Um, the only reason I left to go to um, left Petucci's was because I wanted to go back to more normal hours, if you will, inside the hotel business. Uh, why they fell from grace or why they started closed stores, I, I really don't know. They, he, they got bought um, before they got bought recently. Um, and I think they got, I forget the name of the restaurant group. It was like American something restaurant group. It's, yeah, it's coming back to me now that you mention it. Yeah, and I think they, they just changed the way they, um, they did business. I, I, I think, you know, Joey was kind of the, the driving force behind it, kind of the visionary, and it was his personality. And then when he went away, his personality probably went away too. And the company tried to fix what probably wasn't broken. Which right. So often. Do you recall what year you might have worked in the Wellesley store? Uh, yeah, let me let me get back into the Wayback Machine. Um, it was probably in the late 90s. Okay, all right, late 90s. So I went to Babson College for an MBA, and I used to hang out at the Wellesley store. So this yeah. is like, too familiar to me. That would have been yeah. 1988 and 89 to 90. So Yeah, we, we did a lot yeah. of deliveries to Babson and all, those, all the schools around there. That's awesome. All right, cool. Let's move on. So... I'm a huge believer in numerous profit centers and restaurants and hotels, you know, not just selling food and drink, but selling retail merchandise, but you know, events and private parties and groups and all this is a huge added source of income, huge extra profit center. And it's beautiful because you know how many people are coming in advance. You can plan and prep for this. And then there's that thing called breakage where people are paying for a set number of people, whether they show up or not. It's a beautiful thing. And now you've got software that sort of manages the whole thing. So why don't we talk about, you know, how it works and, you know, all the bells and whistles and, and what it can do for our audience. Yeah, sure. So how uh, Triple C came about really was um, I did an event in 2006, 2007, some, sometime in that time frame, um, at, a, at a restaurant in Chicago. And the event didn't go out as I anticipated it. And when I um, asked the event manager what happened, she, she basically told me she lost the paperwork to it. Um, and they were winging it. <laughs> and it was obvious. Yeah. So, um, so I basically asked her, I said, why aren't you using any kind of software? And her response to me was, the entire industry doesn't use software. And I'm like, why not? And she was telling me that it's too expensive, too complicated, and not really geared for restaurants. It's more geared towards large hotels. Um, so I did a little investigation on my own, and she was right. Uh, around 95 to 99% of restaurants um, didn't use software, and they also viewed their event business as one month out of the year, which is in December, right? You just thought, you know, holiday parties was all they did. Um, and they didn't really take the revenue very seriously. So um, that's when I started Triple Seat. And um, we were basically um, telling these restaurant owners that, hey, listen, the, the revenue and the profit from events is not a one month thing, it's a 12 month thing and you have to take it seriously. Um, and we're gonna provide you the tools to not only um, plan the events better, uh, but also to get it off paper and pen so you can report on it. And then finally, um, increase your sales. And you'll see that, you know, you're not, you know, a lot of these restaurants were doing 500,000 up to a million, some to 2 million in revenue annually. And it was all on a notebook or in somebody's head. So if that person quit, um, or if, if uh, they lost the notebook, they were done for. And when 2008 hit and all the, all the event meetings and stuff like that and everything just went to the toilet, they felt it. Um, and they were like, hey, why are people coming to us? Why don't we have events that we had last year? And the event managers were like, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I'm like, I, I have no reporting. I don't know who my customers are. I don't know anything. And it really hurt him in the pocket. And then when that happened, um, Triple C 
you know, really took on a, a, um, an explosive growth path because the owners um, back, you know, started to realize that the event business is like 30 to 40% of our revenue. It's absolutely huge. And now you're talking about having a system in place versus a notebook or it's in an employee's head that then leaves who's in charge of the whole program, right? right. So now you have a system. They say you got a system if you can literally leave your operation for a month, a week, or a year. And when you come back, it's just as successful. I mean, these are all critical operating systems. And you can't have, you know, an operation that's just run by the seat of your pants. So I'm a huge believer in that too. I love this idea so far. Um, what did it take to start this company? How many years are, are you venture capital backed? I mean, how did you gain traction in the industry? How are you finding your customers? Tell me about that. Yeah, sure. So obviously I, I came from this industry. Um, so what I did, I had this, I, well, I basically had this idea and I was just like, I know how they're booking business. I, I see what's on their notebooks and I'm like, I can take what you're doing on a notebook or an Excel spreadsheet or Microsoft Word and we can put it on, um, we can make a software application that's web-based so you can have access to it from anywhere. Because I didn't want to have it, like there's a lot of restaurants that have more than one restaurant. And so they should be able to cross book each other. So I didn't want to silo each restaurant. So we put it on the web. So we made it web-based. Um, that way they can cross book. So if you have a restaurant in location A and you have another restaurant that's maybe you know 20 or 30 miles down, um, in location B, you can cross book each other without making the customer call the other restaurant if you didn't have that space. So that's, you know, we made it web-based. When it's web-based, it's easy to deliver, right? All you have to do is sign up, right? There's no hardware to install. There's no software to install. And then second of all, what I did is like, we looked at the, the planning part of it first. Like how can we make it creating a banquet event order really fast, really easy? How can we check, make checking space really efficient and, and you can maximize your space so you know that you know, a party on a Saturday is worth much more than a party on a Tuesday. Um, so you can, you can manage your space in a much more financial way, a much more valuable way. And then um, finally, we, we added CRM aspects to it, which is understanding who your customers are, you know, when they book, how often they book, when their birthday is, you know, the typical stuff. Yes. Um, and we just tied it all together. And what I did is um, how I sold it was I just feet on the street. I just, I just went into Boston. I, I walked into Davio's. They were my first customer, Davio's in Boston. And I walked in and I said to the event manager at the time, I said, hey, look at this. This is better than a notebook. And they bought it. They bought it on site. And I was just like, this is great. So I walked across the street to Grill 23 and I said, hey, Davio's just bought this. You want this too? And they bought it. And I just ping ponged my way down the street and I never looked back. So we were um, bootstrapped for about eight years. Um, so meaning I didn't take funding. We just self-funded ourselves. Um, and, and in June of two years ago, we, uh, we took a small round of funding to fuel the growth. Um, so we, um, we went, so right now we have about, I would say around 5,000 to 6,000 restaurants in the United States. That's awesome. And you work with some of the biggest names in the business. Like we're talking, let us entertain you. Um, Union Square Hospitality Group. I mean, these are the biggies. I mean, yeah. how did you land those clients? They're amazing. Yeah. So we have um, Rosa Mexicano, Union Square Hospitality Group. We have 111 Madison Park. We have... Um, we have them all, basically, um, all like, you know, the brand names that you could think of. We also have, um, we also have a, a lot of um, individual restaurants, you know, that neighborhood restaurants we have. You know, our mix between like, like what you would call brands or management groups to independent individual restaurants is probably 70, 30 on the, on the independent side. Um, so like 30% of the groups and 70% um, of the individuals that make up our mix. Um, so it's not just for like big restaurant groups. It's, it's, you can compete with the big restaurant groups with our software if you're just a, a one-off type of restaurant. As long as you have space, you know, it's, it works for you. So how we got there was um, 
a lot of it was word of mouth, right? So it, it traveled really rapidly when, because we have a sales component to it too, which we help capture and deliver leads to these restaurants from event planners looking um, to book spaces. I like that idea. I want to touch on that. Give us the whole story there because there's a key advantage to restaurants and hotels taking this on with that whole lead generation process. So please walk us through that. That's great. Yeah, sure. So how it all came up, how are, it's called venues. Um, it's venues.triplecd.com is where you're going to find it. Mm -hmm. um, but we, it's called venues by triple seat. And how that really came about was, um, when I first started Triple Seed, a lot of people were asking us who else was using Triple Seed. So we put a bunch of logos on our website. And then what we did is like, well, people are seeing these logos, they should be able to click on the logo and then take them to their website. Um, and then we did that. And then I said, well, now they're on their website, they should be able to capture that information that the person's looking to do a party. Um, not a reservation because, you know, Open Table has that market, you know, back then. And I didn't want them to, I didn't want to just put in their information, like the dates I wanted the event, you know, what kind of event it was, when it, I wanted it, and then be able to hit the submit button. And then it goes directly into triple seat and right to the event manager. Um, and now you can report on it and all that good stuff. But you can also get back to the person who requested that information really quickly. Um, and when I was in the hotel business, uh, at doing sales, our motto was first one in wins. True. And so if you got a lead and you took too much time, the odds are you're going to lose, right? Because somebody beat you to it. And we wanted to provide that speed to the restaurants, which was like, listen, you got, you got somebody who walked onto the lot, so to speak, you better get back to them as fast as possible. So we reduced the amount of time that a restaurant gets back to somebody from like maybe 24 hours or a couple of days to within minutes. Um, and that's really helped increase their business because somebody's looking to book a space and a lot of people don't look to book a space from nine to five, right? They look like when they get back from work or whatever the case may be. Um, and so they can get it a lead 24 seven and respond anytime they want. So that's how it really came about. And then what we did is we, we had all these logos sitting on the website. And I was like, let's just move the logos onto its own venue directory site where people can go in and search like by, by menu type, by location. Um, so if you're looking for a steak place that can hold 50 people um, in Boston um, that has a handicap ramp, um, you could do all that and find it. And then that person can submit that lead to the restaurant and they can get right back to them. That's excellent. Fantastic. Yeah. Let's get into the CRM piece. Let's say, you know, a restaurant um, uses your software and they're big into private parties and groups. Does this also work for, you know, the personal touch with their everyday restaurant customer? It, it does and it doesn't. And in, in the respect that, you know, the, a lot of the information that from the personal is, is kind of siloed um, in their uh, in their uh, reservation system, and it's hard to get that information to us. And it's also um, we could send the information to them, but there's there's a, a technology disconnect um, between these reservation systems. Um, we do have an integration to Seven Rooms, which allows for that to happen. So now you can get the 360 degree view of a customer. So if they come in and, and like make a reservation, you'll also could know that, hey, they booked like a 50 person party with me, maybe at a sister restaurant or at this particular restaurant. Got it. Okay. So let's talk about the onboarding process. Okay. You've intrigued me so far. I think the audience is interested in what this software can do for their venue, their operation. I know you work with hotels, you work with nightclubs, you work with restaurants. What's a typical onboard process to get this app un you know, up and running and, you know, seamlessly using it and then tech support. Yeah, sure. So um, it's super easy. What, the way it works is that, Typically, um, what restaurant people do is they want to see it, right? They want to do a, some kind of demo. They want to, you know, and see how it's going to fit into their business. 
um, and see, we aren't really trying to change their flow of how they book business and stuff like that. We're just trying to streamline and make it faster for them. Um, and also trying to help them obviously increase their sales. So a lot of times people want to see that how it works and they want to make sure that it doesn't change their flow and totally get it. So what they do is they take the demo and if it looks like it's going to work for them, um, all we ask for them is to send us uh, some basic information. We need their menus because we'll load their menus in for them. Mm -hmm. um, we need their logo because we're going we're gonna to customize the site and use their branding, not our branding. Um, and then we need um, like the names of the rooms or the sections of the rooms. And then finally, we need like if they use a banquet event order or and or a contract or, and or a proposal, we need yeah. that too. And we'll build that inside of Triple C. So now they can create a proposal that they're familiar with because they've been using it in the past. But all the information now comes automatically into it versus having to cut and paste all that stuff out of Word. Um, so once we have that information, it takes us about a week to two weeks to load it in and build out the site. Um, and once that's done, we uh, set up training and a lot of our training is online. It's web-based training and um, we show them how to use it. What's nice about Triple Seat is that um, I tested it on my mother who's 82 and she doesn't know the first thing about restaurants. So what we used to do is like say, hey mom, create a booking and we would watch her. And if she got stuck, we were like, if she's getting stuck, everybody's gonna get stuck. Um, and we would fix it and then we'd say, go ahead, create the booking now. And if she could go through it without getting stuck, we were like, bang, we got it. So triple seats like mom tested, mom approved right now. So anytime we do a new feature, we stick it to my mom and then see how she can use it. So doing the training is really simple because it's, it flows really well. And it, and even if somebody's not used to technology, you know, the people in the restaurants are getting more familiar with technology than they were in the past. Um, obviously with, with phones and stuff like that, but uh, they still like, this is new to them, right? They've never ever seen something like this. They're not coming from another system where they can kind of borrow um, how they used it in the past. This is, you know, new, new land for them. So we try to keep it as simple as possible. And we, and the training reflects that because after about an hour's worth of training, you're pretty much good to go. So now we have an online template because you've uploaded all the information from that particular venue. And then the event planner at the restaurant, hotel, nightclub, whatever, literally, you know, custom tailors a proposal that then gets emailed through the app to the event, you know, director at the company that wants to have the event. Is that correct? Like, that's how it works. Yeah, basically how it works. Um, so what they do is like, let's say they, they book a party, a, a wedding party, you know, a wedding dinner for 50 or something like that. Right. And they want to send out a proposal they create the proposal within triple seat. And what they do is they quote unquote share it. Um, and what it, it's not an email per se, it's, it's a way of communicating via email um, to, to their customer, to their guest. And what that does is that you can type anything you want in there. Like here's a proposal for your wedding. I, you know, I look forward to you coming in, you know, the room's going to be great for you, whatever you want to say. Um, and then you hit share. And what that happens is that their guests will get that as an email and in that email will be a link and they click on the link and it takes them to this like branded, their restaurant branded like mini website, if you will, with all the details, with the BEO, the documents So they can actually pay on this customer portal. Um, they can do anything they want. There's all the details about the restaurants on there too. So it's this really slick, um, sexy, if you will, uh, customer portal that the, that is customized that the the guest gets. So it's a real like one on one feeling between awesome. the restaurant and the customer. And obviously, it's it's totally custom tailored and on brand to that venue. So it ha yeah. it comes across as being really professional and dialed. I like that very much. Yeah. Okay, that's very cool. Um, is there a need for tech support? Um, tech support in the traditional sense, like it's broken like yeah. turn it off, turn it on type of tech support. No, cause it's web-based, right? So you're not going to break it. Um, but you, we do have support. We have a lot of support and our support basically is surrounding how to questions. Like 
how do I create this or how do I change that? Um, so we field a lot of those questions. Like they do the training, they get it, they understand it, they start using it, but you know, they retain you know, a certain percentage of what they're taught. And so when they get to that certain section, we have a lot of videos for them and we have a lot of like help for them online that they can go to. But we also have the ability to talk to us online through a chat and they like to just throw up a chat saying, hey, I'm in this section, what do I go next? And we have support people that are like, oh, I know where you are, do this, do that. Okay, that's, that's great from a tech standpoint. How about from an operational standpoint? Let's just say I've been running my restaurant for years. I just decided to put a banquet room onto my place. I've never had a group event before. I need this software because I really see it as a huge potential profit center. Can you help me sort of put all the pieces in place to, to get my first event off the ground and then learn by doing and then use the software to create more through the event generation and the leads and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, we have a lot of restaurants that say, you know what, I'm going to jump into this event business. It sounds good, right? And, but a lot of times they come to us and they say, we don't even have a private dining room, but you don't have to, right? So you, we tell them to say, hey, listen, you can do a buyout. You can like carve up. We have a lot of rooms that are bar left, bar right, you know, corner, corner right room even though it's not a room, it's a semi-private room, if you will. And in the course of them doing the demo with us and then doing the setup, we kind of put on our consulting hat with them and say, hey, listen, I know this is your first, first foray into this. You know, I know you don't have a BEO or a contract. Um, let us help you design one. These are the ones we've seen that are pretty accurate and pretty stuff like that. And like, we, we can borrow that. And we also have our own triple seat templates that they can use. Um, we just leave the legal stuff off of it. You have to get a lawyer to put that stuff on. But, but after that, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. That's great. You know, with that, you're right. You don't need a dedicated banquet room, conference room, that sort of thing to do private parties. You know, when I first started, and this probably goes back 20 plus years ago, we wanted to do private parties and we didn't want it to impede on our regular traffic, but we wanted to bring in a, you know, an additional revenue stream. And yep. we found the opportunity to obviously give people or groups really, really good deals to come in early or come in late. That That's was right. totally outside the realm of our, our regular dinner service. And that was just huge for us until we then expanded and you know, built extra rooms and all that other kind of stuff. So it's true, you don't need a dedicated room. You can start anywhere. And this sounds like the key to doing it. Yeah. Um, have I missed anything? Is there anything else you wanna tell the audience that's relevant to Triple Seat? Um, not, maybe not so relevant to Triple Seat itself, but to the industry itself, yeah. the, the, the event business is from where it was in 2008 when I started it to where it is right now, uh, sorry, Triple C, to where it is right now, it has grown like crazy. And what we've seen is these owners who basically plucked, you know, a good manager out of obscurity and said, hey, just book events for me, you know, do whatever you do, but also you have to manage the floor and uh, you're the opening manager on this day, have completely changed their attitude. And now they've like, they have dedicated salespeople. Right. They're like, and not just one, but they have like three or four and they're also centralizing it. They're like, like, listen, we don't have to be in the restaurant to do sales. They're, so they're, what they're doing is they have a sales department that maybe works out of a corporate headquarters. Some people might even work out of their house um, and all their, their strict job is to just, just do sales. And when they book it, they just they send it over to the, you know, using triple seat, send it over to the restaurant who does the detailing of it. Um, so it made a, so a, the amount of, you know, it used to be a, like a slow season, right? And the slow season was anytime after December. <laughs> now it's, there is no slow season, right? It, it, it is bonkers all the way through, even through the summer. Um, and the, the other thing I've seen is that, um, event managers are much more sophisticated about their space. Um, they understand the value of a Saturday night versus a Tuesday night. Before they used to take anything that came down the pike, right? He's like, you want to do an event with me? I'll take it, right? I just want to book it. Now they're like, hey, listen, 
don't take a party on a Saturday night unless you do a minimum food and beverage that's $50,000, right? But if they want to do, if their budget's only $20,000, move them to a Tuesday. And they also, you know, don't just do events that are food related, so to speak. They'll do meetings now. Like they went out and bought an LCD projector and a screen and it cost them a thousand bucks. But now they have a boardroom in there and they do meetings during the day and they have, and they roll in lunch and they've just gotten so much better and so much more sophisticated that it's, it's the, um, and they, and it continues to grow. Here's another thought. And, uh, you know, I'm curious because banquet business, group parties, events, all that sort of thing. It's not just the food and the drink portion. It's also the entertainment. Is there a way to present, you know, perhaps videos of bands that you could share with your potential clients saying, okay, you're interested in doing a party for 500 people on a Saturday night and you want entertainment and we recommend this band or this band or this band and you pick which one you want and dial all that in. Can you do all that too? Um, well, we're not a recommendation service where they can, they can like choose a florist and choose a band and choose a photographer. That's not what's on our directory site. It's just, the, it's just venues. Sure. But restaurants for sure can guide people about their experiences. It's interesting you mentioned that. We do, um, every year we do a conference called Event Camp. And what that conference is all about is bringing in other restaurateurs and other event managers to tell what they do um, and how they get business. We also bring in event planners, like corporate event planners, mm -hmm. to talk about what they want from the venues. Gotcha. Um, it's a really interactive conference. And um, event planners, when they tell the event managers from restaurants what they want, they're talking about experiences. They're like, hey, listen, I'm interested in your restaurant, right? And I'm interested in your restaurant because its reputation for food is good. The reputation for service is excellent. It's a cool spot, right? It's a cool looking. But what can you as the event manager tell me how to make this experience better for my customers. Mm -hmm. And so uh, event managers, that's, that's their cue to be like, hey, listen, we can put a band in this corner. Let, let's say you're going to Nashville, right? There's a band every 10, 10 feet. You can say, listen, we can get a guy that can play country acoustic music in the corner um, during, your, during your event. You don't have to pump in music. Or, you know, we, we can do, we have a place that does like barbecue. And he's like, they sell an experience. What they do is they sell you um, how we create barbecued ribs, like, and how to make spices. So that can be part of your experience at this particular restaurant. So the restaurants, again, you know, are like, it's, it's more than just the four walls and the service and the food. It's also about the experience that you're going to give them. You mentioned earlier there's a free demo, and I know I was on your website earlier and I found that, so I definitely recommend that uh, restaurants that want to dial in their event planning go to your website, check out the free demo. So is it tripleseat.com, your URL? Yeah, it's just T-R-I-P-L-E-S-E-A-T dot com. Perfect. And they can go, so if they can go on, on our website and they can request a demo right from there, and they can actually pick the date and time they want to do the demo, we, they're like, hey, I, I'll do it on a Tuesday at three o'clock. And they just press the button and then we'll reach out to them at the time they chose. And we can do an online demo. Our online demos, depending on the questions, um, takes around 30 minutes or so. Awesome. Why wouldn't you want to do that? This is a great yeah. opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, it's, you know, it, the amount of revenue that events generate is around 30 to 40 percent for the and the average rate of of an event has climbed dramatically it's gone from around two thousand to twenty five hundred dollars the average event up to forty five hundred so that's great because now the profit margins are even higher too yeah i was about to say that too there's definitely roi to doing events and the profits are there and as we mentioned before you know you get that breakage factor as well because not everybody always shows up at the event but you're selling those seats that's awesome yeah it's predictable revenue yeah like you know going into february or march or april mm -hmm. what you're gonna do in business you you know it's predictable revenue versus the a la carte you're 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 hoping you're you're getting what you budgeted for but with events, 
it's right there in front of you. It's like, I know exactly how much I'm going to do in events in this month. So it, it's, a, it's a really great way to, to add additional revenue to your business, predictable revenue to your business. How does the audience find you on social media, Jonathan? Uh, we're on Instagram. I think we're at, at Triple Seat, and we're also on Facebook. Um, again, under Triple Seat. Okay. Um, so, and we we also do a lot of uh, blog posts. We do two blog posts. One is kind of Triple Seat related, and we also do another one that's more restaurant related um, on our venue directory site. Right. So you can find both those blogs on our uh, on TripleSeat.com. I'm going to put all this in our show notes because I definitely want the audience to not only check out the website, the free demo, I think it's a great opportunity to really explain and see the ins and outs of what we talked about and how it works. So I think that's great. Awesome. Any closing thoughts for the audience? Any words of advice on how to run a super successful restaurant? Um, keep the hot food hot, right? <laughs> and service, make the service great and, you know, just exceed expectations and it'll have a successful restaurant. Fantastic. Well, I really appreciate you being on the show today, Jonathan. It's been awesome talking to you and uh, triple seat. That was the restaurant Rockstars podcast. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time.